Why does everyone keep printing these masks with their 3D printers? I get that comment all the time and I don't know why people are mad. Let's make them more mad instead of printing my own design. I'm going to buy one. I like this Ghost of Tsushima design. It costs about $12. I don't know what that E means. All my masks are 180 millimeters wide and I glued them together using resin and a UV flashlight. And that's pretty much how the printer works. I should have sanded both parts of the mask down to avoid that gap, but I have a gap so I filled it in with Bondo. I think everyone has an experience in their lifetime with Bondo or someone in their life using Bondo. I even tried Spot Putty. Hands down, Tamiya Putty is my favorite for filling gaps. It can even fill the gaps between my thighs. The worst part, but most crucial part, is the sanding. I want this mask to have an antique look, so I gave it black primer to be the base. The airbrush gives me an excellent flow to put down these microscopic beads of paint. Let's throw down some red. With the light spray, it already looks like rust. It looks like it came from the Age of Iron, might have been red at one time. Let's add some yellow. My eyes are playing tricks on me and it started to look a little bit green. Needs more red and it achieved this earthiness. It was so sick. It looked like a museum artifact. Outside in better lighting, it looked incredible. The airbrush paint is very fragile, so it needs a protective coating. I'm using a matte clear enamel finish instead of a high gloss one. For me, resin kind of irritates my skin, so I always, always, always spray it with some sort of protective coating. When it dries, you get that matte finish and it looks amazing. It looks as old as this 1988 Samurai. There are many mask designs online, but this one stuck out because of the traditional look. This mask definitely represents something inside of me. And I hope you'll recognize me on the battlefield. 